Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to sync your throttle bodies on pretty much any of the Yamaha triples, your FZ09, your FJ09, your XSR, your MT09, your MT09 Tracer. This is an insanely simple thing to do that the vast majority of owners just skip out on. Partially because, number one, it's very expensive to have done at the typical dealership, hundreds of dollars. It's ridiculous. Second, because they don't see because they're not aware of what they are the immediate effects of not doing it on schedule or when it's off significantly and three because they think it's just really hard to do it's not hard to do it's just a step more than changing your air filter really it's that simple this bike it's nothing special we only need one special tool and it'll work for every bike you're ever going to have and that's a manometer also car, called a carb sink tool. Now I recommend and use this one. It's from England. It's from a company called CarbTune, Morgan CarbTune. And I got it years ago for about 120 bucks. But today, as of the time of this video, the dollar to pound ratio is really advantageous to us. And it works out to something like 80 bucks. There are other brands out there with very similar gauges also. This one is great. It uses solid rods. Other types will use gauges or liquid in the tubes. This one just works perfectly and it's super easy to read. So I love it. Obviously we're only gonna be using three out of the four gauges of this tool and that's perfectly fine. It works up to obviously four. Good for the vast majority of bikes out there. If you have a six cylinder, you'll have to get another tool. The one important thing real quick about this tool that I, I see so many people making the mistake of is just read the instructions. The instructions that come with this thing is basically a paragraph about installing the restrictors. That's it. So many people pull this out of the box and they connect the tool directly to their bike and these things are going all over the place, they're jumping, you can't get an accurate reading and they don't know what's going on. It's because they just haven't read the instructions. There are these little tiny plastic restrictors that you just snip and you cut and you put it in here, in line. And that's it. And what they do is smooth out the reading. So you'll see in the video here in a bit that your bars go right to where they need to be and you look at them and you're done. All right, that's the only secret to this tool. Other than that, we're just popping it on, doing our thing. If I wasn't making this video, this would no joke be a 10 minute procedure. It's that simple. So step one, we're gonna put it up on a rear stand because we need the bike level and we will be idling it. Step two, we need to pull off the seat and put down a nice thick, either big heavy blanket or an old comforter or a bunch of towels, something to give a nice cushion so we can swing the tank and lay it back here. Now I'm not gonna go into exhaustive detail about the teardown in this video because I've already done one on specifically how to get these parts off and get to where we're going. So I'm going to pull off the two side covers, then we're going to swivel our tank backwards and set it on the back, and then we're going to be actually removing the air box. So that's the one extra step from replacing the filter. Now we can disconnect and remove our ECU. Helps to slide it out a little bit, and it's easier to get your fingers against the push tabs on the bottom. Just wiggle them off. Slide this out. We'll be putting this back in to idle it, so don't put it too far away. Move your connections out of the way. And now we're gonna go ahead and remove the airbox assembly. What we need to do is remove the airbox itself, which is just three bolts. And three little tiny bolts that are holding on clamps from the runner tubes going down into the throttle bodies. Now, true to factory form, these suckers are on there so tight, only one of which is moving. The other two, and it's really hard to see, right in the middle there you can see one. The other two are so tight, they're rolling the rubber tube up off the throttle body. So that's how I'm going to actually remove those two. I'm just gonna pop them off, slide them over, and then loosen them once they are off the throttle body itself. But uh, don't be tempted just to put a long Allen in there if it's got a ball socket on the end, because you will strip out that bolt. 
Torque spec on these is only basically hand snug. They're just way over tightened from the factory. So I'm gonna go ahead and zip off these three bolts. There are two rubber lines on the bottom I'll show you once I get it up. And then we can just move this out of the way. And get to the guts of the matter. Here are the three throttle bodies and this is involving two parts of them. First are these little rubber caps. There's one on each throttle body. The one on the left side is at an angle and it's lower. It's a little hard to get to. You can't see it but it's just straight down. It's They're virtually all in the same spot. So here's how I get them off. First you want to loosen them especially if it's the first time it's ever been done and I just Gently give them a wiggle and get a little bit of excess rubber coming off the tip. And then with the needle nose pliers, grab as much material as you can, gently but firmly squeeze it and just pull them off slowly. Comes right off, just don't lose them. And don't tear at it because you don't want to tear the rubber. But if you get a good grip, it slides right off. It's not under that much pressure. So after we get these off, those are the ports where our tool is going to connect. To adjust the actual throttle bodies, we have three adjustment screws, and they are all right up on top. There's one here, one here, and one right down in there. And we adjust these just with a tiny little jeweler's type screwdriver, whatever you have. They're obviously very easy to get to. Now the important thing here is that for this model, 2017 FZ09, they want you to find the master, and that's going to be the one that's painted with a little bit of white paint. It's probably going to be hard to see on the camera because it is very faint, but this one has just a splash of white paint right on top of the screw itself, and the other two are clean brass. So just put it in the light if you need to figure out exactly which one it is. This is the way most modern bikes are. The master is going to have some type of distinction. It used to be that the service manual would tell you exactly which cylinder was the master. That's kind of the old way to do it. Now it can vary. My particular bike, it's the right hand cylinder. Your particular bike might be one of those two. Does not matter. Whatever the one is white, that's what you're going to adjust to. That's the one you never touch because the ECU is calibrated to that position and the other two are just along for the ride. So I'm going to pull those two caps off. We'll connect up our tool and then we have to Idle the bike, let it completely warm up, wait until the idle RPM comes down to its normal level. Now we can reconnect our ECU. The tool needs to be hung straight and level, just allowed to hang. I just put a couple zip ties on the end and drape it off my handlebars. That works absolutely beautifully. It does not matter which line you put on which cylinder at all, just remember which one you made the master. In this case, I made it this third here. I'm counting one, two, three from the right, just because it was easiest to hook up the lines. And the other one, if you've got a four and you're using a three, you just leave dangled. These do not need to be clamped at all to the engine. You just push them on the nipples. So now we're going to carefully idle the engine, bring it up to temp, however many minutes that takes. And you want to make sure that you keep a hold of your tank and it doesn't go anywhere. Once the idle comes down to a normal idle, we are ready to go ahead and start our reading. So there you go, that's all there is to it. Total adjustment on this brand new unit, this only has 700 and some miles right now. First throttle body sync is spec'd at 600 miles. Is every bike going to be significantly off? No, absolutely not. The tiny little bit you saw from beginning to end there, it was a half turn on number two and about an eighth of a turn on number one to get those nice and level. 
The trick is, once you make an adjustment, give it a few good revs and let those settle back down because you have to actuate it and you have to get some airflow through there for the new level to take. And that's it, it's just trial and error. Go about a quarter turn at a time to see where you're going and work from there. Sometimes it can be more finite. Very rarely are you ever going to need more than a full turn. That's really out of whack. So let's talk real briefly about why the heck you need to do this. A lot of people are under the myth that you only need to do a throttle body sync if it starts to idle poorly or if you get some throttle lag or big hesitation or something like that. And while it's true, all of that happens, if it is significantly out of whack, what you're missing is before that point, the number one thing it causes if it's out of sync is high frequency vibration. The cylinders, the torque load on them is out of sync. Even by a hair, it will manifest itself through vibration. And that's most commonly felt through the handlebars. On some bikes, it can mean the difference between your throttle hand going numb or not. I'm very attuned to it. I can tell on my bikes when I'm due, just from the slight change in vibration, because I know what it's like perfect. And if there's a change, something happened. That's what happens. So. Give it a shot. If you've never done it, if you've skipped them, you're going to feel a difference. I can't count the number of people that have commented. I've done these videos on other bikes. I can't count the number of comments that come back that say exactly the same thing. Holy crap, I didn't think it'd make a difference, but it really did. Trust me, it really does. Super easy to do. Maybe a hundred bucks, maybe 50 bucks, depending on what tool you buy. That's all it takes. And you're good to go forever on all your bikes. You never have to pay a dealer to do this again. You can see it's very simple. It's just some prep work. So that's it guys. Hope this helps somebody. Subscribe to see more. I've got tons and tons of videos out there and tons more coming. See ya. Oh, by the way, assembly is exactly the reverse. There's really nothing special. Here's a quick tip on how I get these rubber caps back on. I simply do the exact opposite. I squeeze it gently but firmly in the needle nose pliers and just lever it back on. This will pop right over the tip. That's all there is to it. Everything else, good and hand snug on all these bolts and you're done. Enjoy.